Hi, this is Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada. What I'd like to do is cover different setting styles in Matrix. Now, you might be familiar with all these builders that I'm going to talk about, and that's great. But one thing that I want to stress in these videos are what the setters are looking for. Even though the programmers of Matrix were mindful of the different stone sizes and what the prong size or the claw size should be or what the bezel thickness should be, there's some other tips that I'd like to point out that will keep your setter happy. Now, these are just guidelines. I'm going to repeat that, just guidelines. And so if you follow these guidelines and your setter decides that they do not like my guidelines, definitely listen to your setter. They're the ones that are setting it. Again, I'm just giving you some suggestions, things that have worked for me. I'm a full-time CAD operator now with my own company, building models for other companies. So this is what I've learned over the last 20 years of using Matrix and teaching Matrix. Okay, so if we start down here at the bottom, here's a bezel that we created with Bezel Builder. The next two settings were actually created with Bezel Cutter, quite a fun tool. I like this one quite a bit. So we've got a die struck head here, six claw or six prong. And then we've got a half bezel with a little fleur-de-lis cutout on the side. There's also Head Builder, and there are four different levels with Head Builder. Hopefully you figured it out. If not, we'll talk more about it. And then I've got this pendant here where we use Gem on Curve, where we're tapering the gems from small to large, and we're also talking about Prong Builder. Next, we have these channel set earrings with princess cuts. And we'll talk more about setting up the channel for your setter to be successful. These little butterfly earrings here, we use gem on surface. So we were able to add the gems and the prong on surface in this case here. These chiclet earrings, these are considered gypsy set or flush set or hammer set. And then Matrix has a Halo Builder. So here's Halo Builder. And this type of setting style down the shoulders is actually called Bead Set. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Basically, how much extra metal you should be allowing on this type of setting. Also, that's very important here with our channel set. We've got to make sure there's enough metal on the sides here for the setter. Then we've got two different versions of Pave. This is actually using the Advanced Pave Builder. And then this one is using the regular Pave Builder. The nice thing about the regular Pave Builder is that we're able to do these cool cutouts underneath. So don't give up on the old original Pave Builder. This next one here is bead and bright so there's actually the stones are set in a channel you've got to make sure you've got enough space in between the stones and the walls and this was actually created with head builder this um, half bezel look next here is micro prongs your stones are going to fall out i'm sorry to say it's very very popular but the stones fall out can i repeat that the stones are going to fall out but i know it's very popular but the stones fall out so we'll talk about that here's an old builder in matrix as well called cluster builder and boy when you need to make something like this where the prongs have to come down and they're different lengths and at different angles, you are going to love Cluster Builder. And then the last one here is using a tool called Orient to Gem. And you can see here that we've built this custom setting. And then with Orient to Gem, we're able to apply that same setting to these different size gemstones. It works really, really slick and very, very fast. So those are the different setting styles that we're going to talk about in the next couple of videos. Again, I do teach online classes 
And if you want to sign up or take them, you can reach out to me. Uh, I do have a primary, intermediate, and advanced. There's over 100 videos in each category. So just let me know which ones that you're interested in, and I'll be happy to help you out with that. So let's take a slight pause here, and when we come back, let's talk about these three setting styles. And we're back. Here are two different gemstones. One, we've got round faceted, and then the other one is a round cabochon. So the one thing with matrix is that, again, the programmers were mindful of whatever size gemstone that you had. You'll notice that, you know, you got a smaller gem, the prongs or the claws are smaller. Sorry, I'm Canadian, so I have to say claws. Or with a larger gemstone, they're larger. So the same thing with the bezels. It really is determined by the size of your gemstones. So this faceted stone here is uh, one carat. And so we've got a 6.5 millimeter cabochon here. So let's just select this bezel and we'll delete it. Select the stone. Now I like to use shortcut with matrix and one of the shortcut keys in matrix is if you tap f6 on the keyboard out pops this short little menu on all the tools that are associated with a gemstone so rather than finding it over here just tap f6 you can also press down on the wheel of the mouse to access f6 as well so we'll come down here to bezel which is short for bezel builder and out pops our standard bezel and you'll notice that there's a bevel on this bezel because technically if you were to buy a pre-made bezel so let's just grab this bezel chamfer in X and ch bezel chamfer in Z okay so if you're going to buy a bezel it's going to be straight walls it definitely will not have a dome on it that's what you're basically buying so what the setter does is they will drop the stone into the bezel and then they'll file away this edge anyways so that's why there is this bezel chamfer in x and in z or z okay so some of my customers don't like this look at all they they want they want this okay so they get this and then some of my customers go wait a minute I don't have to cast all this extra gold and have the filing sitting in my setters tray but what I want to talk about is thicknesses. So this stone is a one carat. For all my stones that are one carat and less, and even if they're a little bigger than a one carat, you'll notice here that our top thickness defaults at 1.1, way too thick. So I am making all of my bezels 0.5 and you'll notice we get this little the dome tends to freak out a little bit when we make it smaller so I'll just bring that down so there you go and I bring this back just a little bit and so for all stones and especially if they're green peridot savorite tourmaline emeralds anything green I used to work with a setter and he says anything green had a 50 50 chance of surviving so again he would make sure that he filed down this edge to make it super thin for a green stone okay so I'm leaving my top thickness at 0.5 then I can come down here to the base thickness and I'm holding down shift so I get that one tenth increments and then we can just slide this up to whatever height that you want so one other thing I want to talk about with bezel builder if you click on 
the little Taco Bell icon here. There's all these different shapes and they're fun to look at and you can make your own. But generally, I'm either using number one or number 21. That's the only two I use. It's a bezel. And again, some of these are cool, but unless they're just a earring, you might want to mess around and use some of these different shapes here. But we'll just stick with 21 and hit select. Okay, now with the cabochon, let's delete this one. So with the cabochon, here's our matrix cab. And again, it was a six and a half millimeter. And I didn't adjust the height. So the one thing with your cabochon, some are going to be deep like this. Some are going to be shallow. So that's the one thing that you have to make sure that you're giving the setter enough metal to push over. So it's almost like you have to be a little taller past this curve here so that they can push the metal down. And it's going to look weird that it's going to be very tall, but you're going to need it. So if we select the cabochon tap F6 and go back to bezel. So now you can see here that it's basically f remembering our last settings for that faceted stone. So let's find the seat depth and we're going to pull that up. Okay. And maybe we'll select our little Taco Bell and go with the flat sided and we'll pull this angle out to about zero and I definitely get rid of the chamfer. We'll raise that up. Now the other thing too is here is our seat angle. See it defaults at 45 with the faceted. I'm going to pull this up, hold down shift to 90 and we don't need a ledge this thick. Okay. You, barely have to have a little bit of a ledge. You just don't want the stone to drop down. So once I've adjusted the ledge, then I can come in here with my base thickness. So again, it's important to make sure that you've made this bezel tall enough. Now, what I'm talking about now is for production. So you're going to want to save these as is for the printer. Now, if you hit the arrow down, so I'm using matrix nine, but if you hit the arrow down, so here are the five master jaw bags. And the first one is called master. So when your project's complete, you can store it here in the master folder rather than trying to search in your jaw bags here on where your final piece is. The next one is called creation. So if you're like many CAD operators, you've done many, many halos. And so rather than storing all of them in a job bag, this is sort of a work in progress. You can put things in the creation folder. Parts, again, if you're using posts and butterflies or ear nuts, omega backs, cufflink backs, you can store those in the parts folder. Render and output. Okay, so in this case here, I'll select these and I'm going to put them in the output folder because these are the ones that I actually want to send off for printing. Render, again, some of your clients may want to see what this is going to look set. So you can pull this down and adjust it. You might want to nudge it in slightly. Okay, so there it is set. We can go back to this one. We can go to edit bezel and we can find the bezel placement, pull it down and find the bezel scale and pull it in. Okay. And then if you wish, you can go ahead and save it into your render folder. Some people will actually change the color. So if we select those and put them on blue and throw it into the render. So this helps you, especially if you're not using these master folders, if you're using the regular jaw bags, 
and you haven't changed the color and then you're in a hurry because all of us are in a hurry and you send off the render bezels as opposed to the production bezels. I've done that. Trust me, I've done it a couple of times to the point where, yes, I am changing the color so that when I go to put it on the printer, I'm like, whoop, wait a minute, these are blue. This is not what I need to print. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about with bezels. So I think I'm going to end the video now. We've gone a little bit longer than I expected. So take a break. Stand up, stretch your legs. I'll see you in the next video. And again, I'm Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada. And this series of videos is basically talking about guidelines for your different setting styles in Matrix. Thanks for sitting in.